One of the most controversial issues since the war in Afghanistan began is the detainees being held in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. How do we determine exactly who they are? Well, Fox News has learned of some revolutionary technology, which in the near future may become a potent weapon in the war against terror. It is called brain fingerprinting. In the war against terror, heightened security, new laws, better trained personnel, and a new awareness of overall crime prevention is on the minds of politicians, the military, and ordinary people. In airports, at our borders, in our neighborhoods and cities, new technologies such as biometric facial recognition, retina scanning, and upgrades in fingerprinting are being implemented. The newest and perhaps the most interesting development could be the future of intelligence and counterterrorism. It's called brain fingerprinting. Brain fingerprinting allows us to determine scientifically whether a person has a record stored in his brain of a crime. This is similar, actually, to DNA and fingerprints. DNA matches the biological samples with samples from the crime scene. Fingerprints match the prints on the fingers with prints from the crime scene. Brain fingerprinting matches information stored in the brain with information from the crime scene. This headband will pick up the electrical signals from the brain, and they'll connect you to the amplifiers, which will amplify the signals. Then they'll be analyzed by a computer. Fingerprints and DNA are available in only about 1% of cases. The brain is always there, planning, executing, and recording the crime. We now have a way to detect scientifically that record of the crime stored in the brain. Brain fingerprinting can be useful in a wide variety of applications. For example, if an individual wants to enter the country and claims to be an innocent Afghani student, but we suspect that perhaps he's not that at all, but rather as a trained terrorist, we can make that distinction by seeing whether he has the information stored in his brain that only a trained terrorist would know. And of course, our intelligence agencies have access in detail to the, the contents of specific terrorist training programs. Dr. Farwell claims that besides the obvious benefit in developing screening tests to root out potential terrorists, brain fingerprinting would be useful in the area of crime investigation and insurance fraud, just to name a few applications. Though testing by the FBI and CIA are ongoing, so far Dr. Farwell claims a 100% accuracy rate. Brain fingerprinting has been applied in a number of actual criminal cases. The first one was the J.B. Grinder case. He was the prime suspect in a murder for 15 years. They never had quite enough evidence to uh, convict him. I conducted a brain fingerprinting test on J.B. Grinder. I found that he clearly had the details of the murder of Julie Helton 15 years ago stored in his brain. At that point in the state of Missouri, he was faced with an almost certain conviction and an almost certain death penalty. So he pled guilty in exchange for life in prison without parole. In another case, Terry Harrington was convicted of murder 23 years ago and has been in prison since, always claiming innocence. When we ran the brain fingerprinting test on Terry Harrington, we flashed on a computer screen three different types of phrases. One of these types was what we call target stimuli, and these describe things about the crime that he knows because he's been told. And when you see an item you recognize, you get a rave response that looks like this. This peak here is a P300, and the peak plus the valley is called a murmur. Now, the critical question here is, does Harrington recognize the specific details about the crime? The only way he would know these things is if he actually committed the crime. And as you can see, there clearly is no recognition response to the probes. Now let's look at Terry Harrington's brainwave responses to information about his alibi. You see that clearly this P300 and this murmur, this recognition response, is there in response to details about Harrington's alibi. So you can see the conclusion here is that Harrington's brain contains a record of the details about the alibi, and Harrington's brain does not contain the salient details about the crime. Terry Harrington has not yet been released from prison, but he's appealed for a new trial based on brain fingerprinting and other exculpatory evidence. We expect that brain fingerprinting will become more and more widely applied uh, now that it has been ruled admissible in court.